your mind to the way, the conscious way, the way of conscious mindfulness. Podcast with me, Sifu Boggy. Sifu means guide, you know, somebody who points you along your way, who guides you on your path. Boggy means the banza between the chaos and the calmness. And for the last 39 years, I have been studying the Taoist arts. The Tao means the way, the path, the balance. And I've been studying different arts, different techniques like Tai Chi, Qigong, Tita, Tui Na, Chinese massage, reflexology, acupressure, five elements, healing, five elements cooking, Taoist philosophy, and many, many other different techniques with the main goal of helping them and helping myself and therefore helping others to balance themselves, finding their own personal way, path, or Tao. And through the last 39 years, uh, I have helped many students with chronic pain, with fibromyalgia, uh, with stress and anxiety. And I've also helped other students who were mass- massage uh, coaches, uh, massage <laughs> massage healers themselves, get the words out boggy, um, therapists, uh, coaches to supercharge themselves and to ensure they never burn out, which is another ability of the Taoist arts. So that's who I am and what I do. What's this show all about? Well, this show is sit down with Sifu on a Saturday. Hello, Saturday. And we're continuing our Taoist journey through different skills, different philosophies of the Tao. And we mentioned it a couple of episodes ago about Wu Qi, the unlimited possibilities. Now, one of the concepts within Wu Qi is Wu Wei. Um, Wu Wei. And it means, there's actually a saying for it, and that saying is, do little and everything is done. Often, often, um, said to be said by Confucius, which is not actually the case, but that's a story for another time. So Wu Wei, the philosophy of doing little and everything is done, doesn't actually mean do nothing. On the contrary, it actually is almost like, um, it's almost like, like a quantum physics, a Taoist quantum physics sort of idea, or even like a magician idea is understanding the domino effect the butterfly effect of things you know so one little thing can create a a trigger of effect after effect after effect that will will build up so like pushing that one little domino and you know one domino hits the next hits the next and you can eventually have dominoes the size of doors the size of houses toppling over because that power builds up or the snowball effect the, the you know the the, uh, the snowball starts off very tiny and rolls down the hill and gets bigger and bigger and bigger through the momentum the butterfly effect that a butterfly flapping its wings in a field can eventually cause a, a, a hurricane somewhere on the other side of the planet so it's the it's this effect cause and effect quite literally so well, this idea of Wu Wei is a very powerful technique within Taoist philosophy, within uh, the, the book known as the art of war or the art of strategy. Uh, it is very much about redirecting things. It's very m- much about knowing the whole cause and effect. So this and this Wu Wei concept is is constantly throughout Qigong and Tai Chi and the different styles of Qigong, especially one called Zham Zhong, which is standing stake or standing tree, which will be a podcast at some point. Um, but it's this, it's this idea that very subtle things can build up. 
Now we know this in probably different ways. Like if you think of uh, in an annoying way that, you know, a little saying or a little words, if you keep saying, you know, if you keep saying a word to somebody or, you know, a child says, are we there yet? And at first, you know, it's not a problem, but after 127s, are we there yet? It becomes, it can become very annoying. So it's this thing of building up the Wu Wei concept of things building up over time is, is in actual fact, the Wu Wei is also known as the water way, which is drip, drip, drip. Now, we're in the West, we know this as Chinese water torture, I, as in, you know, uh, being locked in a room and you just, or you're, uh, you're you know, in your bed at night and you can hear the bathroom tap slowly dripping, drip, drip, and, and you know, drives you in, in, in insane, that constant yet subtle noise. And so, you know, we know of this concept mostly in a negative way. Um, but the Chinese water is actually known Chinese water technique or philosophy uh, of this, you know, doing a little bit over and over again builds up. So within, for example, within Qigong and Tai Chi, we say 15 minutes of day of practice will build up into something mighty. You know, at the, at the time, it seems something very small and insignificant, which is always quite ironic as a slight boggy tangent here but as a teacher when I say to to a student 15 minutes of practice a day I haven't got time 15 minutes in 24 hours I can guarantee I can find at least at least three 15 minutes where you're sitting there waiting for something um uh, if not more um so but so this idea this concept of of doing 50 you know 15 it doesn't have to be 15 minutes the the idea um in nlp neuro linguistic programming which you'll hear me say oh, that's a Taoist thing you know that's east that's western Taoism. uh nlp is this this idea that you know subtle doing things very subtly build up over time into into a programming into a way of do, doing things but you, with uh in nlp or with it, you know, you could learn three words a day of a foreign language, and very, very quickly, within ten days, you have thirty words. You know, within uh, within a hundred days, you have three hundred words, um, and that can build up. Now, if you could do ten words a day, where within ten days you have a hundred words, within a hundred days you have a thousand words. Well, th there's there's about three thousand words at, on average in a basic language, a basic understanding. So within three hundred days, just under a year, you could have a whole new basic language. You know, so over a period of time, this builds up. You know, and this is this whole thing of subtleness of this subtle, slow persistence. So the Wu Wei concept is a little bit every day. Now, the, now there is another thing in psychology that states that if you do something between five and fifteen minutes f every day for six weeks, that's a habit. That becomes a habit forming exercise, a habit forming technique. Hence, why why we say if you can do fifteen minutes of qigong every day, now you don't have to do it all in one go. You can actually do it like for a couple of bouts of you know three fives or even a minute 15 minutes of qigong every day, single day but you do it over a period of time it becomes a habit and then you'll naturally do it so the Wu Wei concept is at first it's about habit building stuff or it's about creating stuff that goes from the consciousness into the subconscious or unconscious and the unconscious it becomes something you automatically do and there are lots of things, lots of things that we do through the day that we unconsciously do, you know, that are on an automatic program. And the Wu Wei is about tapping into that unconscious, it's tapping into that subtleness. But it's also about knowing that, you know, you can do one little thing that will build up 
into in, into something else. So, and again, negative versions of this are rumours, gossip. You know, one person says, oh, oh, Sifu Boggy is psychic. And within, you know, so hit that one person until somebody else, until somebody else, until somebody else. And, and suddenly everybody... You know, this thing becomes from gossip. It, it can be seen, oh, yeah, it's wrong. Everybody knows, so it must be true. And so it's this really subtle thing. And again, you've got other versions of it, so like Chinese whispers. You know, Chinese whispers, what, it starts off with one person saying it, and it turns into something else, because it, when each person says it, that information can be slightly altered. Now, within the Taoist philosophy or using that way, Wu Wei principle is using minimum effort to gain maximum results. So, for example, uh, in martial arts, so within the Qigong, so within, say, like one of the Qigongs is Tai Chi. You know, and well, I think we've done a, a podcast on that. And if we haven't, we'll do one about the difference between Qigong and Tai Chi. Um, so that comes up quite a bit, <laughs> is that, you know, so Tai Chi is a um, gentle redirection of energy. So somebody's, you know, somebody's about to hit you and in let, instead of trying to, you know, use all your effort to block it, um, you know, and, and you're just using all the strength in your arm, you use your whole body using the whole body and you step with the whole body to a sort of like a diagonal side and bring your hands up and as the fist comes towards your face you put one hand sort of the back of the hand on on the that that fist or the, the wrist of the fist and then the other hand gently on the elbow of that fist and then you gently as the fist is coming towards you, you step and turn and gently guide it away from you. Rather than using brute strength, you use the whole body. You can redirect something. So, you know, it's that brute force and just a gentle redirection. In cartoons, you sort of see like, um, like, like you know, a big boulder coming towards something. And there's just like a, a little chair, you know, a, a, a chair. And, and, and that it hits the chair and it tilts that direction, you know, puts it slightly off. And suddenly the boulder starts careering in a different direction. It's that sort of energy, that sort of philosophy of the redirection. Redirecting things in a very subtle way. Um, and it's like, you know, in a comp like for me like sometimes people know me as being really loud and you know very boom, boom booming voice but like now is you know i'm my tone is very low and very subtle and in an argument you know if somebody's shouting and you come up you you know you go to their level they'll they'll naturally try to get higher and then you get louder and higher and then they'll get louder and they get louder and it goes up but if somebody's very, very shouting very loud, you come in very soft, you'll actually start to bring that person back down. You know, it, it's a whole, there's a whole philosophy to this, there's a whole understanding to this, but the whole Wu Wei principle is this subtle redirection. And it's considered about water as the whole waterway. Because the Wu, the Wu Wei is that flowing water never grows stale. And flowing water can wear away anything. So you think of a big boulder. The fireway. And there is a fireway and there is a waterway uh, within Taoism. Again, I think there's a podcast for another side. Because the waterway and the fireway is actually uh, considered the Jedi and the Sith within Star Wars. It's that sort of concept, but to get, and then there's another way on top of that. But again, I think that's a another podcast for another time. But this waterway consideration is to be soft and gentle and to adapt to the situation and change things subtly, where the fireway will be very abrupt, very to the point, very zen you know, cutting through, you know, ha having, you know, no nonsense, cutting through. So the waterway could also be considered the Tao and the fireway could be considered the Zen or in Chinese, Chan, 
the Chan is is uh, Zen. So if you look at the Shaolin monks, and they called Chan Buddhists, and Chan means Zen, so the Zen Buddhists, which is very direct, very direct energy, the fireway energy. They use other techniques as well and other energies, but they would be considered as Chan Buddhists because it's a very direct way where the Taoists. And again, you have fire Taoists, you know, different Taoists using different techniques, but the waterway and the water Tao, so being a water Taoist, it is about things being very subtle and, you know, redirecting things rather than making it very obvious, you know, you redirect it in a very subtle way. So this whole concept, you think of a boulder and if you have fire and you blast fire at the boulder, the the fire you know or like you know laser beam and it hits that boulder and it blows up explodes into ten thousand pieces and now you've got ten thousand pieces that you have to uh, get rid of get you know and sort out but the waterway is if the water was flowing towards that boulder like you think of water in the stream and over a period of time that water wears away that boulder so it slowly wears that boulder away and that boulder gets smaller and smaller and smaller until eventually it's the size of a pebble so the waterway technique the wu wei technique is this ability to keep flowing so so martially like the, the waterway is like somebody attacks you just redirect you know you just block it off somebody attacks you block it off somebody attacks you but you and you just keep deflecting 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 and and using no effort using minimum effort so you don't wear out you don't knack yourself out so within this this tai chi concept the waterway the wu wei technique is that you use minimum effort while that person still attacks you or while that thing is still full on and you just keep redirecting 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 and it it wears that person down it knackers that person um, out now the interesting thing to a degree not fully but to a degree the great if you're into boxing the great muhammad ali would be no he was a bit of a water Taoist you know he would dance around the ring and but people would, would try to punch him he'll just move out of the way or think of like Neo from Matrix where somebody strikes and he's literally just moving dodging out of the way of the punches that would be considered water technique because you're you're literally you're not even wasting energy deflecting with your hands you're literally just moving the whole body and redirecting and so you know so you know as a philosophy rather than you know somebody's like sort of saying oh you know you you're this and so no i'm not and he's like well, well what makes you think that you know it is it, you know and and it's redirecting it's redirecting that that now there's this whole thing of the zen way is called um the uh the the zen of the thousand cuts or the thousand questions so you know like you know somebody asks you something you say well why do you think this why 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 and the Taoist way of that is well you know it's it's, it's almost the same but in a rough far softer way is, you know is that you know oh i don't like your i i don't like you go well why you know what you know what what do you know of qigong what what is it that you think qigong is so rather than saying well what well, i don't care or you know being very attacking it's about redirecting the questions it's about redirecting but you can redirect in a harsh way by saying well why 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 or you can redirect in a soft way so well what's your understanding of this or what's the concept of this so a Wu Wei question, rather than saying, like a two, two, like if you use tarot cards or something, rather than saying, you know, will I be famous? Will, will I, um, will I, you know, meet the woman of my dreams? A very direct question. Would be a Wu Wei good way would say, what is the outcome of me meeting this person, or what is the outcome of me pursuing? The woman of my dreams, the man of my dreams, the banana of my dreams. What is the outcome of it? And this is the thing we've done a podcast on I Ching. I could do, easily do hundreds of podcasts on I Ching. 
But the, we've done a, a podcast on the I Ching, and with the I Ching, there are these 64 different answers, and within that answer, there's multiples of, of information. And like and I said, with the I Ching, you don't ask direct questions. You ask the outcome. You know, what is the outcome of this? You know, you're guiding, you're pointing in a direction. You often hear me say, well, it's said to be a Bruce Lee quote. It's actually a Taoist quote. Bruce Lee said it. But it's a Taoist quote. It's like a finger pointing at the moon. But do not look at the finger or you'll miss all that heavenly glory. So the whole point of, you know, it's you point somebody in that direction and then allow them to do whatever they do, which is what a Sifu does. Sifu's a Sifu rather than a master or a guru to a certain degree, um, you know, that they talk about, you know, I am the boss and I tell you exactly what to do. You do it this way. A Sifu, a true Sifu or Shifu, as it's as it's meant to be said in, in Chinese, um, a true Shifu will guide you, will point you in that direction, will let you figure it out for yourself as much as possible, because that's the true Tao is for you to be in control of yourself is to you to find your natural way and when i say those words of um let go and go with the flow that whole philosophy is again is that you know i want a certain outcome but then i let the universe guide me you know i let the universe say you know i want this and i let the universe guide me and that sort of goes to ironically quite funnily is that um you know for the last well all of my life but especially the last 20 years i wanted to move down to the coast and you know certain things there was always certain certain things that would impede that that thing and it's like well you know this is the outcome this is the outcome i want and i would focus you know on just you know the the, you know, not exactly where it would be, but, you know, this is the outcome. I would love to live down the coast and, and have that energy. And eventually the opportunity, uh, only quite recently, the opportunity arose. And, and you know, there's, there's still things going on. I'm travelling from London um, uh, to, 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 for my day job right now. Um, so I go to London, you know, like uh, three, three, four times a week uh, and come back. And, and for some people, they're, oh, oh, that's so far. You're traveling, you know, so, so 70 miles there, 70 miles back, 140 miles. And, you know, that's taking you, you know, five, six hours of traveling. Oh, that's too much. And it's like, for me, it's an adventure because I'm going by train. Um, you know, I'm not driving, so it's not the stress of driving. Um, I'm allowed to, you know, take it easy. I could sleep if I want to. I read a book if I want to. I, you know, watch a, a film if I want to. There's always loads to do on, on my Instagram and YouTube and Facebook. So I've always got plenty to do. Um, so to me, you know, it's that flowing nature. I'm on a train. It's taking me to the direction. But also, there could be so many adventures. Who, who am I going to meet on that train, you know? And I've met some interesting people um, in the past, travelling to and from, you know, London, um, and then to, to Worthing or Brighton, which is the coast. And it's this whole Wu Wei concept is trying not to, control everything trying not to manipulate everything trying not to you know ha have to say it's got to be like this this and this um i mean it works to a degree the zen way of doing things that would be considered zen or the zen way of controlling stuff can work to a degree but it's a little bit like juggling if you're juggling balls you know you you're throwing those balls in the air you've got total control but if you stop juggling and you don't move out of the way, those balls or whatever you're juggling is going to hit you on the head or could hit you on the head. So this idea of of the flowing way is like the, 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 the one. <laughs> I've said this in, in the podcast before about Wu Qi, uh, which is unlimited possibility. But the Wu Wei, another idea or metaphor for the Wu Wei, my 
my Sifu actually f once threw me into a river, this really strong current river, and said, you know, swim back to shore. So they threw me in and, and you know, I, I had to swim back to shore. And it was really tough work. So it was a really strong river and, and you know, uh, and, and, you know, I, that, that was pretty, I'm a pretty good swimmer, but it was really, really tough work. And I eventually, you know, got back to the side that they were on and they followed me as, as, as I walked down. And as I, you know, just like scrambling back up, back back up on, on onto the bank, you know, and getting um, back up, um, my, my uh, Sifu said, now do it the Wu Wei way and pushed me back in. Um, and he was like, I'm knackered, you know, I'm, I'm worn out, I, you know, I've got no energy, and he's like, oh, hold up, he said the woo way way, so I just laid there, you know, and just like, you know, stuck my head up, and so I'd get the air, laid back, and just acted like driftwood, and it took, well, it sort of took longer, and it sort of didn't, but, you know, like, relaxing more, and, and the water was going up and down, and, you know, I, you know, took in a bit of water, and spat it out again, and coughed a bit, but, you know, just kept relaxing, and kept my head up and eventually the water I could say acted like a bit of driftwood the water eventually pushed me to the side of the bank and the whole concept is is that you can fight against the nature of things you can fight against you know everything or you can let the nature find your way back to where you want to be and um, like I said, I, I learned that in a very physical way. You know, I learned that in a very physical meta metaphor. But it made sense. It, it, it was very impactive for me. It made me realise that, you know, metaphorically, you can fight against the stream of life, the river of life. You know, is is um, through my life, like, for example, with the teaching Tai Chi in Qigong, um, I've had certain people say, oh, it never work. You know, you, you, you can't, you can't be a teacher. You know, it's, oh, you know, it, it's too hard. It's too this, or you're too young. And, and, and they'll throw these things at you and, you know, and you can fight against that and say, no, oh, I can't do it. I will do it. And you can, you know, you can fight against it and get there. But how much energy are you going to just, you know, waste doing, doing that? Or you go, well, you know, that's your opinion. That's your point of view. And, and, you know, wait for those opportunities, allow yourself, you know, and say, well, okay, fair, you know, if that's what you think, what I think is different. And allow yourself to keep open and look for those opportunities. Because this, this thing, when you're fighting against stuff, your view gets narrower and narrower and narrower. There's a thing within psychology, within fighting, called the red mist. And the red mist is that you've got so uh, angry that, that things have built up so much is that you're you're you've got such a narrow focus now that all you can see is you know you can only see a very small window and you've totally lost like through especially with emotions you totally lose um awareness and and you see a narrower and narrower uh, possibility you see narrower and narrower reality so the, with the Wu Wei concept is keep breathing, keep relaxed, keep calm, and you see all possibilities, all opportunities. So that whole idea of just deflect and deflect, you know, if somebody's attacking you, um, another sort of, for me, another sort of concept, the Wu Wei concept, is uh, there was a film, uh, I think it was the 80s, eight, yeah, I think it was late 80s, um, with Steve Martin, uh, called Roxanne. And it was actually based on something else. It was based on an old uh, 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 French uh, story. Um, but this in this movie, uh, Roxanne, I think it's Dow Hanno was in it, and, and Steve Martin. Steve Martin had this really long nose, um, huge long nose. And, and people would take the mickey out of him. He studied martial arts, and he beat people up you know he'd do the zen way he they would take the mickey out of him and he'd beat them up um but then he sort of through nature well through falling in love he fell in love and he actually found the wu wei way of do, dealing with it which was that 
you know, somebody called him Big Nose, and he, he, because he was in love, and and you know, he was actually open up to more perception. He sort of said, "Is that all you can come up with?" And the, and the man, the bloke, went, "What do you mean?" He says, "Well, I can come up with something better." And they threw a dart, and it it hit the number twenty. So he says, "I can come up with twenty something betters." So Steve Martin's character, rather than just attacking the bloke for 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 um you know calling him big nose he actually said well is that all you can come up with i can come up with 20 better better things than big nose and he says oh, you, know, you know and he said things like oh you know this nose you know god made it so birds could perch on it you know and you know is that i can wake up wake up in america and smell the coffee in Paris. You know, and and you know everybody everybody around was laughing, but they were starting to you know because he was taking the Mickey out of himself. Those people were actually coming onto his his side, um, and and this this the person who attacked him, who called him Big Nose, was getting more and more frustrated because because even though he was taking the Mickey out of himself, he was actually that the Steve Martin character was actually taking the Mickey out of this guy. Because he was saying that, oh, you know, or you know, you, all you can come up with is that I can come up with a lot better than that to insult me, and I've actually done this. I've um, I've done this in 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 the past where you know, um, in certain situations, somebody's trying to be gr aggressive to me and 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 you know, take the Mickey out of me because I've actually got you know, audio you can't see, but I've got quite big ears, um, and I have a unique look, and people would sort of say certain things, and I'd redirect it, and redirect it, and use humour, one of, you know, yes, I've studied martial arts, uh, I've got, you know, eight black belts or above in different uh, systems, but my best form of defence was humour, was because it's always something I've always loved, I've been very much into like Steve Martin, Jim Carrey, Robin Williams. That very intelligent sort of humour, that fast wit has always been my form of my, my intellect and, and, and also my version of a martial art, of Tai Chi, of a way of or Wu Wei, a way of redirecting things. So... And and also as a kid, I was very much into loved innuendos, you know. So you know, something that means something else. And uh, so I grew up on like uh, the Carry On movies, which was very double entendre, very you know double meaning uh, humor, and uh, the innuendo. And so you know, so like you know, somebody would come and they'd sort of try to verb it, well, physically attack me, um, and I I could swip it flip it around by using humour but if they did actually try to attack me um, I would use very Wu Wei techniques so there's a Qigong that I teach called Willow Tree Qigong uh, on YouTube you can find it, Sifu Boggy Willow Tree Qigong and you twist, it's also known as twist the waist, so you pull your bum in so you keep your hips or your qua facing straight ahead and then the belly button upwards you're turning to the left and the right by turning the waist to the left and the right the arms naturally flop so you don't force the arms to move they move naturally through this exercise and the the whole idea of that martially is somebody hits you rather than bracing if you relax the body and allow the body to move with that punch you actually redirect that energy so you don't even have to lift your hands up to, you know, connect with that arm and that fist. You can literally just allow the body, relax the body and allow it to move to the left or the right. And the Wu Wei concept is actually part of a style of Qigong and a style of martial art known as drunken style. So the drunken style is doesn't actually necessarily have to contain alcohol, firstly. <laughs> but the drunken style is well you know you go up and then you go down and you sway left and you sway right you you go forwards and you go back so if somebody hits you and they they hit you with their right hand 
to the either your chest or, or the right side of your body and you turn you allow your body naturally just to as they push just relax the body and let the body move to that right because they're expecting when they hit when people hit you they expect you to st- still be there they expect you to stand still to brace and take it but if you relax the body and allow the body to move as that as that punch hits you or that push hits you that strike hits you it moves the body and as it moves the body your body moves and it moves out of the way it starts to slide away from that that punch you know so you they hit you on the right side of the body and you allow the body from the upper side of the body to move to the right at some point that punch will start sliding away because the body's moving to the right and the punch is still going straight ahead think think of like pushing a sliding um one of those rotating doors you know with with the the thing in the middle you push the door so you push it on the left side and the and the left side of that door rotates um and and if you don't start walking and you're pushing you're going to fall forwards and this is what this martial art technique so the willow tree qigong or drunken style is the whole idea is that as they try to attack you is you you just naturally use the flow of the body the body mechanics and it moves out of the way or it, it naturally diverts that that strike or that punch so there's a whole technique there's actually different ones but there's you know drunken style is using using the philosophy of being drunk or how you sway to the left and sway to the right or sway back sway forward and you counterbalance your your body naturally counter reacts and counterbalances and if you don't you hit the ground if you fall over when you're drunk you tend to be more relaxed you don't brace yourself you know oh, oh I'm falling over and if you relax it hurts less um, and this is a technique I've actually used in ice skating as well. And I teach ice skating. I say, relax the body. Just, you know, as you, if you're falling, just breathe out and relax. And when you hit hit the ground, it hurts less because it's drunken style. Because the whole idea is that when you're drunk, you're not aware of really what's going on. And you fall over and you're relaxed and, and it doesn't hurt. And, and, you know, as children, when we're babies and we fall over... When we at first, you know, we fall over, it doesn't hurt. It's only the shock of falling over and they get upset on. But they actually, if they relax and, you know, if a baby relax falls over, it goes, oh, that didn't hurt. They laugh. It's only if the parents go, oh, my, oh, you know, they fell over. And then the baby thinks, oh, I should be in shock. And then I should be upset because I've I've hurt myself. You know, it's so it's this interesting concept that actually certain things are taught. They're not don't necessarily begin that way they're actually taught so if you teach yourself to be relaxed you know we you you know somebody gets something to to i'm not telling you to get hit but if somebody hits you and you relax into it um it hurts less um if at all uh and this is like if you ever watch jackie chan the drunken master you'll see these techniques is where you know he's told breathe out and relax you know breathe out and let go and because then when that that impact hits you and you're breathing out it hurts less it's when like in car accidents i've been in one or two car accidents and i've used that technique of relaxing as the impact's coming or relax act like a test crash dummy and relax and allow my body just to go with it but when you brace you actually you're bracing the body you hold all uh, you hold hold the body with tension then when you get hit or you have that impact it hurts a lot more so there is this technique in, like uh, in judo um, and uh, in the Chinese versions of this chi na and whatnot, which is um, like um, grappling techniques. But, in, you know, you learn how to fall. And if you relax the body and soften the body as you fall and roll in the certain you know, roll the body as well, then then the body naturally absorbs that impact in a way that, it doesn't uh it, um, it doesn't affect it but if you're bracing the body when that impact hits you it causes damage it vibrates through through the uh through the muscles and the tendons and if the tendons are the tight 
and that impact hits that that muscle that part of the body it can rip tendons because you're holding holding the bones there you know in a rigid way it can fracture or break bones so when you relax you can actually soften the impact and you can lessen the impact and if you can do that physically you can do that emotionally and spiritually as well you know it's about lessening the impact by be remaining soft from being like water so the Wu way doing little and everything is done everything can, can be done so it's a, a you know on a defensive way it's about being so, soft and subtle and going with a flow in, in a way of doing stuff it's like thinking well right, what one little thing can i do that will will build it up or, or just point things in that direction so so you know like you want to create something you you know create it in a certain way or you know you want to learn a new technique don't spend three out three times a week six hours um each time trying to learn something do it 15 minutes a day you know and and you will learn, learn it over a period, period of time uh you know and learning the Wu way learning would be short bursts of information so say so you've only got a month to learn something but if you do you know five or six little sessions every single day or even just four three little sessions every single day and, and and you know keep them short and you know learn you know focus on that thing when you're doing it then relax and chill focus on that thing relax and chill and that your brain works you know your brain works in a far better way when it's given both something to do and then allow to relax and allow allow that to absorb into the subconscious so it's understanding well the Tao would be how your brain works as well because we don't all work exactly the same way so it's understanding how we work and using subtle techniques to get that to happen um you know, so so the so the the Wu Wei is very subtle. The Wu Wei is about doing little things and knowing that they can build up over time, and doing them regularly as well. You know, rather than, like I say, rather than going to the gym, um, twice a week for two hours, why not try, you know, doing half an hour a day? Not necessarily saying going to the gym half an hour every day, but. You know, you don't necessarily need gym equipment. You know, you you've got weights at home. You've got bags of sugar. You 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 know, you can always find heavy eating bottles of water. There are things that you can find, and and say you rather than working on something really really big, say like you know, rather than trying to lift five hundred kilo, why not have a kilo weight and lift that five hundred times? You know there's two ways of doing it will build it up in a, in a different way the, that repetition will build it up just in a, in a different way or five or that that you know that five kilos a hundred times there the, the, and there's your 500 kilos there are many different ways to do stuff and and like i say it's understanding that subtleness can can redirect things in, in a very powerful way and when you understand about how how the mind truly works you have a small your your mind is like an iceberg the the uh, conscious mind is only the tip of the iceberg there's a whole lot underneath the subconscious mind and the subconscious works on subtleness and repetition it works on doing things a little bit every single day over a period of time uh, meditation is a very powerful technique but meditation again is a lot of people oh yes you know you know what once a week i do i do an hour's meditation why not just do five minutes then every single day it would actually have a greater effect you know doing things daily has a greater effect than doing them weekly uh and and so on and so forth so it's learning the Wu way, it's learning the subtle way, doing things a little bit, you know, rather than, you know, and rather than attacking something straight on or you must do this, is finding a way to redirect people to that idea, to allow them to, to you know, um, think for themselves or think of it themselves. But you point them in that direction. 
Uh, there's a great guy um, in the UK. He's sort of known in America-ish, but called Darren Brown. And Darren Brown uh, is a magician. He's uh, a hypnotherapist. He he's uh, a mentalist. One of the words he's known he likes or uses is mentalist, and is using techniques to get people to think of something. And um, there was a um, one of his uh, things that he did. He he uh, there was a, a, an actor that uh, he he brought in saying, "Oh, you know, I want to give you a gift, and um, you know, but I want you to to you know you to say the gift." And it's in that box. There's this huge box over there, and it's in the box. But I want you to you know. You know, I want you to tell me what, what is it that you you've always wanted, and and he eventually said, "Oh, I've as a kid, I always wanted a BMX bike. I never really got a BMX bike. It was a type of, uh, it's type, like an off like a bicycle, an off road uh, bicycle for tricks and stunts." And uh, he was a BMX bike, and then when they opened it up, there was a BMX bike, and I think he said a red BMX bike, and there was a red bmx bike in there now afterwards what they showed was all around the room there were subtle hints you know the, the, there was there was different shapes that actually made up the word bmx there was different uh um, the light was actually had like a slight spoke spoky uh um appearance to it like the spokes of a wheel um and there was all you know it wasn't direct things but there's all these subtle hints of you know there's a lot of color of red there was a lot of these things and and you know he was seeing all this information and he come up with this red bmx bike and he's a but oh you know he said i don't know where that came from you know i never really thought you know as a kid uh you know i was that interested in that i was more interested in acting and other stuff and but you know i came up with this red bmx bike but all those hints were there so this is the Wu way way is you know doing things very subtly doing and to be honest marketing does this all the time you know they 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 put very really subtle hints in things and do hints do marketing in a certain way that you can that you know you you will come up with things or you won't forget it you know it's like a certain tune comes up and you go oh that's that 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 takeaway is that place and so this this subtle understanding is used far more than we realize you know this this psychology of very subtly putting things in the background for us to to direct us in a certain way so the wu way is is far bigger than we realize you know it's used a lot it's used a lot in media marketing is used a lot out there in the world so you know it's a way of using it for yourself using it to to help yourself learn or help yourself find the things you want so you know subtly doing things like i said with the qigong or the tai chi you know doing a little bit or any technique that you want to learn try do a little bit every single day and learn it that way you know you want to you really want to learn a new language every day learn three words you know don't make it hard just like or even a word a word every day in in a year you'll have 365 356 word you know new words or or somewhere around that if you can double that you'll have a few more like i said 10 10 words a day in a year that's the basic to a lot of languages 3000 3000 words is is, is free, you know 3000 you know um around 3000 words 3000 plus is the basic to a lot of languages you know that that will get you that will definitely get you by so you know there are very subtle ways to learn things you know it doesn't have to be hard things don't have to be difficult you can do things in a very, very subtle, subtle way you know this whole idea of drinking so much water every single day the Taoist concept is take sips take sips every now you know every every you know half an hour or so or 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 you know every few minutes <sighs> boggy sound effects take a sip of water um and you know the whole idea is those you know 
sippy water becomes a habit and that habit will keep you hydrated so it's that whole idea of doing things in a subtle way builds up and you subtly do things and it builds up over time so i hope that sort of makes sense hope you've enjoyed today's podcast of the woo way do little and everything can be done now you know I, this concept this idea goes into as i said into qigong and tai chi and if those sort of things interest you i actually teach them in the shundao school uh, we are a bit of a mystery school as well so it goes into the energy arts as well it's not just about health and well-being as i said you know i've had many students um, with chronic pain, migraines, fibromyalgia, ME, MS, arthritis, many other techniques. And through these very subtle exercises, doing them every week and then eventually getting them to do them every single day, just a little bit, every single day, the Wu Wei way, um, built up over time and over a period of time, within weeks and months, you know, they've radically changed their life. Uh, if that interests you, there is... Uh, Patreon on on Patreon so www.patreon.com forward slash Sifu Boggy S I F U B O W G I E is the Shundao school and there are different levels. It starts off with a very you know one two two uh, classes a week live and then there's so many exercises sitting there, so many lessons sitting there waiting for you. Um, so you can start off very subtly and then the next level after that so that's chi time and then you've got chi time two which is four lessons a week available to you um, and at different levels and and that goes into when you if you see any of my videos of i got qigong for that these different exercises that i have for different ailments and injuries um, the cup of chi level which has those four so it's the four classes that are available you don't have to do them but they're available if you want them that you know that gets gets you into that era it gets you into that understanding of there are different techniques for different ailments and injuries it gets you into understanding the different energy bodies that exist the meridians the chakras the aura the merkaba the toilet field and the dantians and then eventually on that level you can go into eventually being a sifu if you want to as well uh, and then there's another level above that which is the the energy worker or the dragon dog shaman so it's taking a little bit of the the qigongs and this is sort of like ch chinese reiki um and it actually shun qi shen as it's called actually predates reiki and there's a rate we actually teach eastern reiki as well and we also teach a thing called Tahiti, which actually predates on the Japanese side, that predates Reiki itself. And it, it, Tahiti is one of the energy systems that actually created Reiki, which then came to the West and the Western Reiki, which is with the symbols um, and the and the attunements and is done like a workshop. Well, that's the Western version. The Eastern version is more like a class, an ongoing learning and growing experience um so those are available all on patreon www.patreon.com forward slash sifuboggy you can also find me on youtube so just look up sifuboggy and you'll find me on youtube that willow tree qigong that i mentioned that's on there like i said there's about ten thousand people who have watched it now um and you know it's a very easy exercise that can do very powerful things can help you in so many ways you can also find me on instagram i'm there on instagram sifu.boggy uh, I'm also on LinkedIn. I think I'm Paul Seafood Boggy Brighton on LinkedIn because Brighton is my surname. I'm also on Facebook under The Way of Seafood Boggy or The Way of Conscious Mindfulness, which is the shows and the podcast. So there are many different ways that if you want to contact me, you can find me on there. Now, you may be listening to me on Spotify or if you look up on Spotify, Sifu Boggy or The Way of Conscious Mindfulness, you will find me on there as well. And, you know, 
If you have any questions, contact me in all those different ways. And you never know, I might actually, if you want to, you can come on the show and on Sit Down With Sifu on a Saturday, you can actually ask me your question and we can actually discuss it and talk about it that way because I'd love to do shows like that. I love to do the shows where the podcast is actually an interaction. That's one of my favourite um, shows. That's why I do the the interview show. I love just talking with people and finding out their ways, their skills, their techniques, their Tao, because that improves mine because that's the whole point. I'm still growing, I'm still learning, just like everybody. We're all Sifus and we're all the student as well. So that's it really. I Like I say, if you're interested in finding out more, you can find me on Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube, on Spotify. And also don't forget, you can also find me on the wonderful Bring Me To Life uh, uh, where I'm on there and on their network as one of the uh, the hosts of, of, of this show, and uh, or you know look look me up on Patreon. So that's it for now. Take care, love, chi, and shen from me, see for boggy, and remember, open up your mind to the way. The conscious way, the way of conscious mindfulness.